and welcome to Hitting Home with Mike and RF, the the stay at home edition. Mike, it's uh, it's been a while. It's been a couple of months since we've had the opportunity to get together on Rogers TV. Uh, how are you doing, my friend? It's been a it while. It has been a while. And how are you, RF? I'm doing well, thank you. Holding up okay. Uh, isolating at home. We've got two home offices set up here. My wife in one side of the house, me on the other. We meet in the in the kitchen for lunch uh, through the day, but. We're managing. We're making the, the best of the situation here. So there's an upside to this. You get to see your wife on a daily basis and have uh, lunch and dinner with her, something that might have uh, been lost on a number of uh, families over the past generation or so. You'll have to ask her if that's an upside. But <laughs> I, mean, I, I would say I'm, I'm up to say yes, that's an upside. Well, folks, we're doing the edition of uh, Hitting Home with Mike and Arif, and this is the edition that's basically called I swore it would never happen to me. And uh, I, I think who we're going to I beg your pardon? I said, who of us did? Who could yeah. ever have imagined a few months ago that we would be where we are now, kind of living in a future if futuristic science fiction movie here? Exactly, but I'm going to thank uh, I'm going to thank this uh, this scenario for giving us a whole bunch of fresh content, uh, a whole slew of uh, interesting talking points, and I think that uh, I think that our show going forward. I want to say thank you to our partners at Rogers TV, Barry, uh, and our producer Ron for reaching out and saying, "Hey, let's make it work. Let's test out some new technology or some not so new technology, but make it work on community television." And I think that. Uh, over the next few weeks, we'll be able to provide some really interesting content, uh, both for the investor as well as the everyday homeowner uh, from yeah. a finance, from a real estate, from a prediction, from a let's talk about what is scenario. And I'm excited to get into that in this episode or this uh, this segment right now. So why don't we get yes. right to it, Mike? We will be inviting some good guests in to, to join us on the show to, to discuss these very topics uh, over the next few weeks. So. Absolutely. So I'm uh, I'm broadcasting from the fantastic studio called the Living Room in Allendale, and uh, mm -hmm. and let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about what is uh, what are you really seeing right now, Mike? Let's talk about real estate and movement and momentum, uh, both in Barry, but as it I mean, really, um, we've always talked about the fact that there is no. Canadian real estate market. Now there's no global real estate market, but there still are some realities that are being mm -hmm. shared across the different jurisdictions. And what are you as a re realtor uh, noting about trends in the marketplace well, uh, just over a month ago to today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to set that up, it's uh, closer to two months ago that we did our last show. And at that time, early March, uh, I was confident and excited about the fact that we'd had a busier than usual January, February and everything was pointing in the direction of a busier than usual spring market, which quickly turned, uh, certainly once the stay in place, uh, isolated home orders came out, uh, a lot of the new business that would have been uh, coming forward fell off the map. So realtors, including myself, continued to be busy, but it was finishing up business that had already started prior to. And at this point in time, I'm down to a couple buyers I'm working with and one listing, uh, getting fewer and fewer showings as time goes on. And so I think we're going to be in a dark area for a while. Well, people step back and recollect and think about uh, you know, where, where we're going from here, because there's still a lot of big question marks out there about how long this goes, what the economic ramifications are going to be. And until a lot of people can get their head around the, those ideas and those answers, I think people are going to step back. So. so let's talk a little bit about that, Mike. I think just to frame this up for our audience uh, a little bit, I think this uh, this show today uh, will be more along the lines of talking about the what is. I, I know that we've already talked about it offline, uh, that next week we're going to get into a little bit more of a how-to. Uh, but I, I think for the sake of things, for sake of putting things in perspective, those people who are asking me and my colleagues and friends who are in uh, on your side of the uh, equation in real estate, um, there, there's a reality. There's a reality both in the real estate transaction world. There's a reality also in the mortgage world. While the world itself may have stopped, uh, contracts that were entered into anywhere between same day of the lockdown to years ago where we went into one, two, three, five-year, 10-year mortgage term contracts, yeah. the reality is that there are people who are still coming to maturity in their term uh, today during the middle of the uh, of this 
new reality. I don't want to fear monger with the word crisis. I'm going to say it's, it's our reality at the moment, and we'll see what happens in a couple of weeks as the province looks towards opening up. But there are there are negotiations or agreements that were either long already uh, entered into or just entered into on the day that the, mm -hmm. city, the province or the country went into lockdown. And and contractually, by law, I don't think that there was an escape clause. Um, no. Because there's a domino effect for every resale home that's being purchased or sold, there's an, a ripple effect or a domino effect of other parties and families that are being impacted. And obviously, um, you know, uh, other than a force majeure, which is basically an act of God, uh, you're still supposed mm -hmm. to uh, uh, meet your end of the obligation. Yeah. Which is precisely why your business and mine were declared as being essential. And I think that essential, when, when they looked at the what is and what isn't. I, the, the machine, the business economy still has to run. The background machine still has to function. The lights still have to come on. The water still has to flow. So all those people working in those background areas who we don't give much day-to-day -day thought are continuing to work. And thankfully for them, they're showing up every day and taking that added bit of risk to keep it going. Um, your business and mine, uh, different from maybe operating a storefront or a restaurant, uh, as you say, there are transactions that are in place and there's a big domino effect if suddenly uh, there, the evaluations of homes are no longer able to take place or banks are no longer, no longer able to close on transactions. Um, I think it won't be the system itself that slows things down. It'll be the behavior of the individuals uh, that will, if it slows down, uh, they'll be the ones responsible. And again, it'll be that pause, stepping back. I think when we come back, uh, as things start to change and confidence levels go up, we'll see it start to get busier in the fall. And I fully expect that next year, uh, with the pent up uh, wait times of a lot of people, those who are still uh, capable and able to buy or sell will likely be doing so. And there's a lot of variables within there that we can touch on here too. Right. So, Mike, when we come back from the break, which we're going to go to right now, let's talk about the what is happening right now and why is this happening to me? Why are some mm -hmm. of the challenges that I'm facing happening? And then in our last segment for the show, we'll talk about some sort of near to midterm predictions. But right now, we're just going to go to a quick break and uh, we'll be right back, Mike. All right. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Coldwater was the perfect town to host a steampunk festival because it already is a steampunk village. We have the historic grist mill, stone library, we have the authentic historic main street, and we actually are the only festival that takes an entire village and steampunks it for a day. Steampunk is, is Victorian industrial or retro futurism, all based in a spirit of fun and play. There seems to be an abundance of local artists and very, very creative people in an idyllic, authentic, historic village. To hitting home with Mike and Arf, the home game. And uh, Mike, it's it's good to have you back on here. And again, thanks to Rogers for giving us this opportunity. I think we've got some uh, great things that we can discuss in this segment. Let's talk about the reality of what is. Um, I've been talking to a number of realtors and other uh, people in the in the mortgage side of the industry, and we're all seeing the same thing. The question that is on people's minds is, you know, uh, is there as much activity? And if not, why? And what's going to happen to the value of my home and, and all those kinds of things? So let's touch on some of those. Mike, what are you seeing yeah. in terms of, uh, well, in terms of the number of units uh, being uh, offered for sale right now? 
Well, what, what is interesting is, as I, I touched on at, at the start, is that we were entering into a busy market. And it was a healthy market in the sense that, uh, if anything, it was leaning towards being more of a seller's market because there was a lot of buyer activity. The levels of inventory were not up to, I would say, uh, even par with that uh, activity from buyers. Uh, but as things got quieter, it kind of balanced out. So the, the, there's not a whole lot of new listings. We're certainly below where we typically are at this time of year for listing inventory. Um, and we're below where we typically are for the amount of active buyers out there. But they remain fairly balanced. And it's when those balances fall out that we see a shift. Uh, we'll see a run-up of housing prices when there's uh, far, far more uh, demand than there is inventory. And the opposite will occur when you see a lot of inventory that's sitting longer and longer on the market, but few people needing to buy. Uh, right now... Even though the activity levels have gone down, the the balance is there, and that's what I'm happy to see. And I expect that will remain as such. There's a little bit longer uh, days on market time uh, between listing a home and that home actually receiving an offer. Fewer people coming through coming through those existing listings that are out there, but I, the market is still going. I mean, the one so, thing that's the same yeah. before as as after. Uh, COVID-19 is everybody needs a place to live. So Exactly. So uh, let's talk about some of those things, though, Mike. I mean, let's talk about the reality. Why are the number of houses down? Why why is the activity down? And why is it staying relatively balanced? I'm going to give you my perspective. I'm going to give it also for, just from a reality sake basis, but I'm also going to give it from the finance perspective as well. And that simply is that... Um, Plain and simple, if you're going to enter into a transaction, you have to know that you're going to close the deal. And there are people who, uh, for for the sake of uh, security of their home, they've got to have somewhere to, to live. They want to know that if they're selling their home, that the buyer is going to qualify and going to be able to close the transaction. Because if they're going to sell their home, they need, to, they need that transaction to close so that they have money to buy the next home. Yeah. So there's some obvious uh, signs yeah. out there. And I think one of the things that comes uh, into play is – just because you signed an agreement of purchase and sale and you entered into agreement to buy somebody's home, up until the day of closing, uh, the, the, there should be no assumptions that the lender, no. the bank, is going to give you the money to buy the home no. because until the day of closing, if your job situation changes – if you're yeah, you're reassessed prior to closing. Yeah, they have the right to cancel the transaction or delay the transaction or add additional stipulations, and I'm seeing that on a daily basis. So for anybody who started uh, pre-shutdown uh, or in the midst of the shutdown entered into a transaction, I've had clients who on the day of closing got a letter of layoff. Uh, from their employer. It's it's not great. I'm not, again, I'm not here to fear monger. It is a reality. And we have to respect the fact that investors or financial institutions need to know that their security or, or that their charge is secure, mm -hmm. that there's an opportunity or a likelihood that they will receive repayment for the loan that they've uh, issued. So that's one of the things that is definitely uh, out there in terms of why we may have seen a decrease in activity. That's not necessarily to say, though, that the decrease in activity equals a lowering of home values or a lowering of yeah. prices out there in the market. And that's no, I think driven by supply and demand, right, Mike? So yeah, supply and demand. And as I say, that remains balanced for the most part for, uh, at the moment. Um, and I, I think it's uh, confidence uh, confidence going forward is what uh, that level of confidence is what's going to dictate uh, uh, the level of activity that's uh, taking so place in the market on the other side, buying and selling. And you touched on one of the primary reasons why that level of confidence may be a little lower than usual. Um, right. you've got, Mike, you've got people who are definitely, I mean, here, let's talk about some trends in the marketplace. Just because the economy is shut down, just because the entire world, 7 billion people are essentially shut down, does not mean that uh, other realities of life have also gone in pause. For example, there are still babies being born. There are still people who are having natural end of life cycle. So there are still estate sales. There are still yeah. divorces and marriages happening. Uh, and so there still is the change in ownership. Ownership uh, of of homes uh, across the country, across the world. So you will still see, as you said, uh, the need 
to house people, the need for us to be housed, whether it's in a rental home scenario or whether it's in home ownership, yeah. uh, there still is that demand out there. Uh, mm -hmm. In addition to that, though, one of the things that we're seeing is uh, because of all of the reasons that we've talked about before, for example, it's amazing how many things are related here, right? Uh, the, the Ford government uh, is not alone in this, but they issued as part of their emergency act to state that all construction projects that are not related to infrastructure are on hold. And if you yeah. do have a construction project that you're working on, there are those social distancing well, uh, um, uh, you know, implications attached there. So new home builders have put their projects on hold. Some new home builders have also suspended or indefinitely suspended or maybe even terminated uh, the agreements that they had originally entered into to build, whether it's a subdivision or a condominium, yeah. because they don't know that they've got that confidence or security that uh, that their buyers are going to be able to fulfill their end of the agreement or that they're going to meet their timelines. And if, and if I can touch on that from uh, uh, you know what I see as a realtor, uh, uh, and, and even prior to that, just something I read uh, just before we started the, the show here, um, there is a project uh, that I believe it's 12 acres of prime land uh, in Toronto, uh, Cherry Street Spit area. It's industrial land that's being converted into probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, residential developments currently underway. Um, this has all been approved. Uh, the backers, Google or subsidiary of Google was one of the backers of this community. It's supposed to be affordable living for, you know, urban dwellers. Uh, they've stepped away. So that's just one example, but a big example. And I think as long as that uh, confidence of the investors is challenged there, we're going to see more and more of those projects, people backing away from them. And where that ties in with resale real estate is that shifts anybody who is going to buy a new pro property, but still needs to buy, is going to shift their attention towards the resale market. Uh, and in the Barrie area, I mean, here there are so many different factors. Another thing, it's been so many condos sold to first-time uh, buyers and existing homeowners, uh, second-time, third-time buyers in Toronto over the past while. If you've been stuck for the last three, four, or five months in that seven, eight hundred square foot uh, condo that was basically where you came home from work, ate, and went to bed, now you're living in there 24/7. A lot of people are going to be saying, "Hey, we need more space." Now's the time to start looking for that detached house. Let's move north of the city where the homes are a little more affordable, half the price of Toronto, buy a home in Barrie. So I fully expect next year that's going to be creating demand for, for properties and real estate and supporting uh, our pricing staying uh, stable here in the region. Well, with that in mind, you completely broke coat protocol. I was going to ask you for predictions going forward, but I think let's use that as the yep. teaser to get into the next segment. We're going to go to break real quick, Mike, and then when we come back, let's talk about some of those predictions, both on what uh, trends we'll see in the marketplace, but how us as humans, how we as humans are going to adapt to in that new reality going forward. We'll be right back yep. on Hitting Home with Mike and Arf on Rogers TV, Barry, right after this break. The Matthews House Hospice Bucket List Lottery is now on. The next early bird draw is on May 27th and the grand prize draw on July 1st. Tickets available online at mhh5050.ca and throughout South Simcoe. What's on your bucket list? Are you a woman experiencing abuse? Do you know a woman experiencing abuse? Help is available any time of day or night. Sheltersafe.ca is an online map that helps you find a women's shelter or transition house that meets your needs so you can live a life free from violence. Sheltersafe.ca. Help is just a click away. COVID-19 is changing our world and our lives, and it's changing by the hour. Watch CPAC throughout this crisis for unfiltered live news conferences. Connecting you with political leaders and health experts 24 hours a day. The vital information you need on TV, online, on social, so you can see clearly how you are impacted day by day. CPAC. See for yourself. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to RogersTV.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers.
And welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and RF, the Stay at Home Edition. And Mike, we've been talking about sort of where we are and how we got there and uh, wanted to get into some predictions. But I wanted to take a quick pause and just talk about sort of the reality, the dose of reality uh, that many of us are feeling, myself included. And um, just wanted to touch on the fact that, you know, yes, we're resilient as Canadians and we will adapt and we will find a way to prevail and we will move forward. But I think there's a valuable lesson for each of us to to acknowledge and I'm not going to speak for everybody out there in our audience but I'll certainly speak for myself and that is that I know for myself uh, certainly there are times when I procrastinate there are times when I say you know what I know I really need to do be a better job at you know whatever it may be and I'll start that next week uh, I'll start my New Year's resolution next week and then so I, I think that there are people who when we went into lockdown, very quickly realized and learned just how fragile our individual realities were, whether it's as a family, whether it's as a, a, a homeowner, whether it's as an investor, whatever that may be. I think there are some of us who realized that we really were one paycheck away from being quite uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. one you know, and, and, you know, we might have been in a job for so many years, whether it's one year or 30 years. Uh, but even if you're a municipal worker, a city or a government employee uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the city doesn't have its tax revenues coming in, we've now got a bunch of people who are laid off and who are on uh, a form of subsidy or EI or uh, tapping into that CERB payment. And our reality certainly changed. And I think we really each need to stop and say, Here's an opportunity. I, I'm going to come out of this alive, but I'm going to be licking my wounds and I'm going to take a stronger level of interest in making sure that this never happens again. What are your yep. thoughts, Mike? Yeah. Well, and and those wounds and, and the challenges, they're going to be different for everybody for the, for the reasons you've cited and how prepared you were, what kind of a buffer you had. And, and I think as such, we're going to see... Uh, with regard to keeping it on real estate is it's going to push people's plans back a little bit. For some, they may have to tap into that down payment they were saving to buy into that home. It's going to motivate others to maybe make uh, living changes because they've had that time to think and reflect. Um, but it's also going to drive some, unfortunately, uh, if you're a business owner, you're hit harder than maybe somebody who's just received, uh, you know, two months off of work and can go back and pick up where they left off. But if you've got a business that you've lost and is going to take some time to recover. Some of those people are going to have to make some significant changes, which may involve selling a home and moving back into the rental market. So I think the demand for rental properties is going to continue to go up. It's going to bring speculators and investors out who are going to want to buy some of those properties to turn into rentals and that. So we're going to see a shift in priority for, for housing accommodation and and the business of real estate uh, and how that fo unfolds and to what degree remains to be seen. So Yeah, it, Mike, in my opinion, I, I don't want to get into a political discussion here. Uh, I'm not so sure that anybody wanted to sign up to be uh, a one of our uh, federal or provincial or municipal leaders at this time. Uh, you want to use a word unprecedented. I think that's a word that has been yeah. overused for decades and decades. And yeah. today we are seeing an opportunity to use that word quite appropriately. Yeah. And, and I would say to you that, um, I don't know that anybody was going to be prepared. I'm not going to get into a conspiracy theory. I'm not going to get into, is this real? Are we doing the right thing? Are we doing the wrong thing? I think all members of government who are leading us are doing their best, given the direction or the course that we are. Yep. And there are countless people who will uh, tell us that they feel like they were the ones who were caught in the gap, who were mm -hmm. not considered. Certainly our small business community has felt the pinch because they may or may not meet the test in terms of being able to qualify for compensation. Mm -hmm. But as you've mentioned, there are people who are certainly finding that they're either going to be the, um, you know, the slowest to rebound, or they may not rebound, they may have to reinvent themselves. In terms of how this impacts the market, though, Mike, Correct me if I'm wrong. When you look at econ or economics, you basically look at leisure and entertainment as the first to suffer and the last to come back. Uh, let's talk mm -hmm. about leisure and luxury and, and nice to haves. Would you yeah. say that that's the same with the real estate market in terms well, of uh, housing categories? The real estate market on the whole was one of the last to kind of start to go quiet. And I think it'll be one of the first out of the gate to reemerge. 
But within that, you have sort of three ranges. You have entry-level priced homes, mid-range homes, and then the high-end luxury. And I would also put in with that your uh, um, recreational property too. And that high-end is one that may see some impact and may even see, as a result, a lowering in values. Uh, and why I believe that is if you're applying in that million dollar, $2 million plus price range, there's a better chance that you're invested in the stock market uh, than if you're that first time buyer who's maybe just a few years out of college or university and into your first job. So those people have seen their portfolios hit hard, but the spot stock market has been hit. Uh, and that might be cause for, for pause for a lot of those high end uh, real estate owners. And some of them may be selling those properties and their uh, recreational properties uh, in order to cope with with this so it's also just another selling point for real estate in general because real estate prices historically and through this are are fairly stable certainly uh when compared with the stock market we saw what happened over the last couple of months how it just took a nosedive uh once this whole crisis began whereas real estate remained rather stable uh so that's you know in terms of where you put your money as an investment uh that's one you know strike uh, in favor of real estate so let's 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 uh, try and uh, even this out a little bit. We've just got a few seconds left before we're going to wrap this up. The reality is that uh, everything has sort of a ripple effect on on uh, other segments. So, for example, those who are starting a new family or getting married, maybe the wedding's put off uh, a, a few months. Um, you know, they may not be buying their first time home, and therefore they may be staying in their rental accommodation, which is going to put a slowdown on on turning over rent inventory. I We're going to run out of time on this one, Mike, but the yep. fact of the matter is, I think if, if you're somebody who's heavily invested in the stock market and you're living at a different tax bracket, um, there's a reality and a wake-up check for those people as well to determine how, how leveraged they are versus how liquid they are. I don't think we're going to have time to do it. We're not, we're not going to have time. we got 30 seconds. we got to go, Mike. 30 seconds. Uh, well, we've got all the time yeah. to come back for another show and continue this dialogue, Arif, because it is a good one. Exactly, exactly. So next week when we come back at this, Mike, let's talk about some of the how-tos. Let's come back prepared to educate our clients on what is the best way to do this, what is the best way to move forward. I want to thank you for making yourself available. Thanks to Rogers. Ron, as our producer, thank you so much. And, uh, and folks out there watching, we hope you found this useful. We'll see you next week.